to the February 10th, 2021 meeting of the Anacortes Planning Commission. Um, will staff take roll? Roll has been taken. Um, we have minutes from December 9th. Are there any additions or changes for those? None being brought up. Um, any correspondence, Mr. Miesmer or Ms. Cooper? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just like to uh, say hello to all the commissioners and uh, welcome you back into 2021 with the Planning Commission. We've got a few projects coming up uh, in the year ahead of us. Uh, we are finalizing um, our responses to comments on the Shoreline's Master Program. That will be coming back before you shortly. And I'd like to let you know also, we're finalizing the third draft of the critical areas ordinance, which will be going to the city council in March. With that, no other correspondence other than that related to items on the agenda. Thank you so much. Our new business tonight is an open record pre-decision hearing 2020-0002 uh, on the Bayside Moorage Arena project. Uh, do we have a staff presentation? We do. Please go ahead. Thank you. Let me see if I can remember. Okay, everybody see my, so that's the wrong screen. Matt, remind me how to get the correct screen to show. Um, I feel like we're seeing the right one. We're seeing the presentation of the SDP. You are? Okay, because for me, I'm, okay, good. Perfect. Technical difficulties, it's been a while. Um, thank you, commissioners and uh, members of the public for attending tonight's hearing regarding the Bayside Moorage Marina replacement. Tonight is an open record pre-decision hearing because of the value of this project. It bumps it up to a city council decision. So tonight we'll accept public testimony and um, planning Commission will deliberate on their recommendation to City Council. The applicant for this project is Marine Floats Corporation. The landowner is Jeff Wright for Bayside Mortgage Marina. The proposed use is Marina and Boat Mortgage. The zoning for this project is marine mixed use, and the location is 2410 Skyline Way, and uh, parcel number P32370. Prior meetings to this evening were development review group, which was mandatory, and a neighborhood meeting. February 10th tonight is again the Planning Commission open record pre decision hearing. And we have the final closed record decision hearing uh, tentatively scheduled for March 8th, 2021. A complete description of this proposal is the applicant has applied for a shoreline substantial development permit to permit the removal, demolition, and disposal of the existing creosote pilings and floating marina uh, for a total of 7,968 square feet. 43 galvanized steel piling will be installed along with the new floating docks. The docks will use Envirocrete system and will be fabricated into Coma 
and towed to the Bayside Morge Marina for installation. The existing pier and ramps will be reused and redecked with new grading if necessary. This project is a like for like replacement within the existing footprint using contemporary designs to reduce the environmental impact. And you can see an aerial shot of the marina. All three arrows point to the three docks that are associated with this marina and are proposed for replacement. The history of this project, uh, as stated, the applicants held a mandatory pre-application meeting with city staff on June 2nd, 2020. The neighborhood meeting uh, open to the public for comment was held on August 5th, 2020. The formal application was submitted on September 23rd and determined to be complete on November 6th. Noticing for the notice of application was posted on November 11th and the notice of hearing was posted on January 20th of 2021. The SEPA determination was issued on January 13th. During the public comment period, we received one public comment with concerns about SEPA environmental checklist and noise and vibration and related to pile driving in the neighboring condominium building. One agency comment was also received from Ecology in regards to uh, a model toxic control act uh, cleanup site in the vicinity. Copies of these comments was included in the packet for your review and the public commenter also resubmitted uh, similar comments to the record for the official hearing this evening. And those were sent by email to the commission this evening and will be added to the packet as well for review. Critical areas in the vicinity of the project include a fish and wildlife habitat conservation area and a habitat survey dated July 16th, 2020 was submitted that identified no significant populations of listed species in the vicinity. The project was also designed um, to minimize impacts as much as feasible with the contemporary building materials to, gain, to um, result in a net gain of ecological conditions. And then this is the map of their official habitat survey where they conducted transects, um, underwater transects, scuba transects to evaluate the vegetation growth in the vicinity of the dock area. And you can see the numbers and quantities of species that was observed. The zoning for this property is marine mixed use. The designation is provided a, a special mix of commercial, cultural, recreational, and residential uses in a high amenity area along the waterfront with special waterfront re relationship. The design of uses is intended to em emphasize the unique marine setting by pro providing marine access and views for the public spaces. Um, and as you can see in the zoning um, allowed use chart, marinas and boat moorage is a permitted use in the marine mixed use zone. For the Shoreline Management Act and the Anacortes Shoreline Master Program, Proposed developments that lie within 200 feet of a shoreline of statewide significance requires a review under the Anacortes Shoreline Master Program. The subject proposal is located entirely in the aquatic shoreline environmental designation. A 
According to Table 5.1 in the SMP, marinas are a permitted use in the aquatic shoreline environmental designation, which equates to um, a shoreline substantial development permit review. You can see just an area map um, of where the project is located in the western portion of Pedago Island, Skyline Marina, and Flounder Bay, and a little close-up of the parcel here at the tip of the, the jetty. The proposed site plan for the project. Again, it is a like for like replacement in the exact same footing. Um, very little actual construction, again, is going to occur. They'll mostly be built off site in Tacoma and then just towed in place, uh, towed to the area and anchored in place except for, of course, the piling replacement. A little more detailed view of each of the docks. Um, dock A, dock C, and dock B. And so this new floats um, with concrete and fiberglass grading panels. You can see the length of the fingers, and this says a total of 13 new um, steel piles for dock A, um, just an 80 foot length for dock C. Um, again, the concrete and fiberglass grading panels and four new piles for dock C. And then dock B is the more um, complicated design with multiple reaches and fingers. 25 new steel pile, and again, the same concrete um, fiberglass gridded pattern. Existing site condition photos, because we weren't able to do an on-site site visit, this just gives you an idea of what Dock C looks like currently. And again, the gangway ramps are going to stay and it'll just be the floats and pilings. And B Dock, located here and a dock. And you can see, again, um, what was called out that potentially some of the decking for the gangways will be replaced if needed. Um, gangway A has some wood and metal grating as opposed to B and C, which is all metal grating at the moment. So potentially some of the surface will be replaced, but the majority of the gangways will um, structurally will stay. And so what does it mean to remove the entire floats? Um, and uh, what do they look like now as opposed to what they're gonna look like? Um, so again, ramps will remain in place, but all of these old concrete floats um, will be removed and replaced with um, you can see this is a, a good picture of what the concrete and fiberglass gridding, this is the open um, light penetrating fiberglass grading that allows water and light to penetrate, which is um, the environmental improvement to the area. So again, for a total of 7,968 square feet of total float replacement. And likewise, all of the creosote pilings will be removed from the project and replaced with new steel piles, galvanized 
steel piles for a total of 33 new piles. So um, in the staff report, staff analyzed the project and, and requirements under the different code sections. And, and we've decided that it meets all of the requirements and the recommendations uh, and conditions for approval include, um, I'll just briefly summarize what the conditions of approval are. The scope of the project shall not exceed that as set out in the shoreline permit application and must meet um, the scope of the approved site plan that was shown in a previous slide. A FEMA floodplain habitat assessment report must be submitted and building permits um, must be obtained with the city of Anacortes prior to work. The um, habitat assessment report is submitted at the time of building permit. All applicable state, local, and federal permits must be secured. Um, they've already received the Fish and Wildlife HPA permit, which has been provided, a copy has been provided to us. Development shall comply with the mitigation measures listed in the SEPA mitigated determination of non significance. Hours of construction are limited to 7 a.m. and 10 p.m., seven days a week, unless a noise variance is obtained. Um, based on tides and in-water work, the potential for work outside of this uh, is possible and that they will just have to obtain a noise variance in order to do so. And that goes to city council for approval. Noise levels must not exceed those standards as established in RCW and um, Washington State um, Administrative Code. Applicant landowners shall comply with all federal statutes, included Endangered Species Act, Clean Water Act, Marine Mammal Protection Act, and so forth. The project shall comply with all of our shoreline master requirement regulations. Um, as reviewed in this document. And then there's timelines for construction must start within two years and it is good for a five year window. Staff also reserves the rights to supplement these conditions um, for, with information raised um, as of this report in this hearing. staff's recommendation to the Department of Planning and Community or from the Department of Planning, Community and Economic Development is that the Planning Commission recommend approval of the shoreline substantial development permit for city council to review um, as long with the conditions as listed in the staff report dated February 3rd, 2021. There's not a whole lot of detail for us to really um, cover, but we have representatives of the project here to answer questions and respond to any considerations um, that come up through the following discussions. So at this point, I don't have much more to present, so um, I'll turn it over for the hearing and deliberation. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Do any commissioners have uh, questions or clarifications from the staff? Yes, I, Mr. Chair, I do. Go ahead. Uh, two, um, the public comment that was provided in the package uh, primarily pertained to concerns regarding uh, noise and then through the drilling process, vibration, et cetera. And uh, with respect to the noise, have the 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. time frame, is that acceptable to uh, the people of the Homeowners Association there at Bayview? Did we get any feedback on that? 
That's one question. And I was also interested in the process for the removal of the existing CREO site pilings and decking, et cetera, and the transportation away. I didn't see that in the package material. I could have missed it, but that would seem to be also a major effort. Uh, perhaps uh, project staff can answer your second question. Hi, um, I can answer that second question. So when we do pile removal, we use the EPA's best management practices. We use a construction barge and everything's accessed through the water and then a crane pulls it out. And then um, what we'll do is we'll unhook everything after the pile piles have been removed. Um, and then we'll tow it back to Tacoma where we'll demolish it basically and dispose of it in upland facilities. Um, and then we'll tow in with a construction barge, the new uh, dock system. Okay, that's great. That's super. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, Ms. Cooper, who do you recommend respond to the question about the noise levels and, dura and duration? That's a good question. Um, most of what Tabitha just um, just uh, mentioned, uh, they did do a written response to that question. And um, are you able to see? I moved. Are you able to see this email now? So my, most of what she said after uh, responding to Mr. Rutledge's concerns about noise and vibration. Um, the project does not anticipate to do any damage to adjacent property. Um, we as a company follow all best management practices required for various regulating agencies. No work will commence until all regulating agencies have issued approval. We will follow regulations put in place and will minimize adverse effects to the best of our ability. Um, piling removal and piling replacement is uh, pretty common practice. It's, it, it's uh, a widespread um, activity that's going on right now as most people are removing their creosote piles and replacing it with um, more environmentally friendly and much more long-term, um, uh, long-lasting galvanized. Um, and the technology for uh, pile driving or vibrational placement is um, much more um, construction friendly, neighborhood friendly than it used to be. Um, staff's response also is that this is a commercial marine zone. Um, it isn't technically a residential zone. And so it's meant for mixed uh, marine uses, um, industrial uses, commercial uses. So a reasonable amount of noise above just a residential um, amount is expected uh, in this area as well. So um, that's staff's response in addition to the construction company's response. And how were those responses received? Uh, I'm sorry? Received by whom? The, the homeowner, the Mr. Rutledge of the Homeowners Association. Um, the, this was uh, from Marine Floats was submitted by email. And today I, I'm just providing that testimony tonight, uh, staff's response. Okay. Thank you. Certainly. Uh, any questions? Gary, uh, I have a question. Actually, I have a couple of questions and most are minor. Uh, I, I just wanted to reconfirm that the 7,900 square feet was the surface decking. And, and that's uh, presented as square footage as opposed to cubic uh, in terms of uh, demolition and, and uh, uh, recycling. And that, and that leads me to my second question with the uh, existing concrete decking. Is that gonna be recycled down in Tacoma? Um, so yeah, it is square footage. Um, so that includes all of the float surfaces and fingers that are associated mm -hmm. with them. 
Um, and then if Logan wants to jump in on how we dispose of that, that would be perfect. You're on mute, Logan. Thank you, Tabitha. Um, so unfortunately, the way these docks are built uh, doesn't allow us to recycle the concrete. They're, um, the, it, it's easy to look at them and, and think that, that, that it's a big chunk of concrete. What it really is is a big chunk of foam with a, with a thin layer of concrete. With a thin layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and so what happens is, because trust me, it would be much better for us to be able to recycle the concrete, but as you try to um, separate the concrete from the foam, um, enough of the foam material stays embedded in the concrete that the concrete recyclers will not accept it. Okay. No, uh, excellent. No, so that's, that's, unfortunately, that's, we, we can't recycle it. Yeah. That's what I was trying to figure out if there was, if it was embedded or not. So thank you for the answer. And that was, that's all my questions. Uh, any other questions? Mr. Jurisky, your um, mic. Uh, any other questions? None being brought forward, um, I think we will move on to open the public hearing. Uh, staff, do we have people ready to present? Am I, is my Matt, mic I working think, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay. Uh, Matt, so, I think we have one person um, that's standing by, Mr. Rutledge. Yes, we have a Jay Rutledge in the office, but I wasn't sure if you want to speak. Uh, we usually do the raise hands if they want to speak. Should I just allow okay. him to talk? Shall we go ahead? Yeah, let's do that. Mr. Rutledge, I've allowed you to talk. Um, if you prefer, if you'd like to unmute yourself, you can. Uh, if not, we can disable it. Okay, now please go ahead. Yes, this is Jerry Rutledge. Can you hear me? We sure can. Fine, thank you. I wanted to uh, thank you for the opportunity to comment. I did um, send a, a previous email uh, that wanted to reiterate some of our concerns. Um, I'm on the board of the um, East Bay Condominium Association, and we're at 2411. Uh, my particular residence is within 50 feet of the uh, uh, top of the wall where this construction takes place. Our building foundations run um, around 50 to 60 feet continuously around the construction area for the 16 units that we have. Uh, we do have concerns about the noise, uh, particularly about the 7 a.m. and the 10 p.m. and the uh, comment that due to tides, there may even be later uh, at night uh, activities. Um, I admit that I have not been around marine pile driving, but I've been around a lot of pile driving um, associated with uh, buildings. And I know that the vibration and the noise level um, are very disturbing. Uh, I do not know the length of pile that needs to be driven uh, into the uh, substrate. It uh, did not show <clears throat> on the, um, the drawings uh, that I was able to view. Uh, so I don't know how intensive or the duration 
of the noises that we are to expect or the level of uh, vibrations uh, due to the resistance of the piling. So we wanted to go on record that uh, we are concerned about the noise, we're concerned about the hours of operations, and we're concerned about potential uh, damage of um, uh, cracks to our drywall, um, asphalt services, foundations, underground utilities, um, et cetera. Uh, we also uh, have some concerns about the, uh, the traffic uh, in the area. We share common access and uh, parking with the marina, and um, we would like to uh, be assured that we'll be able to coordinate uh, any activities that we uh, that would um, um, tend to close off our access or access to our own vendors, uh, mail deliveries, utilities, et cetera. Uh, we also wanted to make a comment that uh, I did read in some of the contractors um, notes uh, of their work that they're going to do some utility uh, relocate and upgrade. And we would also like to make sure that if there's uh, any anticipated uh, disruption to our utility services, uh, fire protection services, uh, water, uh, electric, et cetera, that there's some sort of uh, notification process to us ahead of time uh, before they would be uh, interrupted. Um, there are storm drains which uh, are in the parking and lay down areas of the construction. Uh, some of those storm drains um, go through a settling um, mechanism which is on our property and that uh, discharge is open into the bay. Uh, we would um, like to make sure there's some type of uh, protection around those storm drains of any contamination or oils etc that might occur due to the construction uh, vehicles uh, or lay down of material. And I think um, that's about the extent of, of what we have. We know that there's uh, positive aspects to this project um, and we realize that, but we are concerned about the items I just brought up. And again, thank you for the opportunity to comment. Thank you, Mr. Rutledge. Are there any other commenters for this evening? Mr. Miesmer, um, I'm thinking that perhaps some of this, some of the concerns may be addressed by the planning, or by the, the permitting process. Board, you muted yourself. Sorry about that. So would it be um, advisable for the city planning staff to respond to some of those questions and perhaps the, the uh, builders project staff to respond to others? Um, Mr. Chair, yes, I agree. Um, I can respond to some of that. So the permitting processes with the city, which include building permit, will require that they provide us with a work plan for best management practices, such as the storm drain catch basins would be provided with socks and appropriate measures to prevent any, um, any fuels or petroleum products or anything like that. The contractor would have to have that plan available for WDFW they probably already provided it to them. Um, as far as water or any other utility disruptions, we require that the contractors um, notify all the abutting property owners that would be affected by that, either whether it's water or power or whatever. Um, so that, that's a given during the permitting process. Um, and as far as you know, noise, and vibration, I think that's something that the uh, contractor um, could probably address. The, the hours of work is, that's a, the standard hours of work for any construction project. If it were a apartment building, single family residence, uh, you know, that's typical. Um, and for in water use, the, co the contractor can talk a little bit about how that works with the, the tidal influences as well. 
if in fact they had to work any other time frames than that, um, if after 10 o'clock, then they would have to submit a noise variance as Ms. Cooper mentioned, and that would go to city council with public comment. So I think the contractor uh, and or applicant could talk a bit more about the vibrations and noise as well. I, I, yeah, I'd be happy to do that, Tabitha. Also, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, I, I would also like the contractor. So this, the concern about land access was brought up in the neighborhood meeting as well. And we had a lengthy discussion that um, the primary, the most of the work is going to be water work from barges and um, and boats and from the water side of things, but the contractor could probably uh, talk about how much of that is gonna be land access, if there's gonna be employees that will be driving to the site and parking, um, or if they'll all be um, accessing the site from water and boats and barges as well, uh, what the expected differentiation between land access and use and water access and use will be. Thank you, Ms. Cooper. Um, Mr. Brown, did you have further comments? Uh, yeah, I, I can. I can. I think speak to most of those issues. I, I, I have a, a lot of hope, at least, that um, a lot of those concerns will ultimately, um, you know, not not become an issue. I think that the um, specifically the noise level, while the the noise level actually changes. Um, for this vibratory pile driving based on what the substrate is like. So if we're, you know, if we're hitting sand, um, you know, it, it tends to be actually surprisingly quiet um, for, for the pile driving. But if we hit, you know, a, a harder ground, the, um, the steel pile does vibrate some and, and create some noise. But um, I, like I said, I, I would I would be surprised if ultimately um, it does become a, a big issue for the neighbors. Uh, the timing question, um, you know, as a uh, my preference is to have as much flexibility as possible to ensure that we you know get in and get out and get this project completed successfully. But that said, um, it is. In, in just due to the danger of working around the water, we try very, very hard not to work during any non-daylight hours. So it would be very unlikely that we would need um, to work into that 10 o'clock hour. It would also be very unlikely that we would need to ask for a variance for uh, additional um, working hours. I just, I, I don't see that being an issue. Um, the uh, the question about access and material laydown, um, the uh, I'm not to, to be frank. I'm not a hundred percent certain how many spots are designated for the marina itself versus for the residents. Um, my my assumption is uh, that our work crews um, will actually take up less. Um, square footage of that parking lot than the regular marina users may, um, because obviously the, during this process, the regular marina users will not be there. Um, the, uh, we're not talking about, once again, under normal circumstances, you know, things change during a construction process, but under normal circumstances, we're not talking about bringing any materials um, on the road, meaning no material lay down area would be necessary at all. And that the only vehicles that would be on the site would be regular transportation of our workers there on a daily basis. And that will even be fairly minimal compared to most construction processes because so much of it is to be built off site. Um, and then so much of it is to be demolished off site. So the, um, you know, I, you know, I think we're, 
we're probably talking about maybe a, a peak of seven or eight vehicles. Um, you know, one thing that's a little bit unique right now on our job sites is that we have we have more vehicles because we're you know trying to do less carpooling um, with COVID. So you know that's that's a, a little bit of a consideration. But we're uh, a typical project at the peak is probably only going to have seven or eight people on it at at any one time. So I think that's a, a relatively uh, safe figure. Um, was there any, were there any other issues that I was um, kind of missing out on? Um, Mr. Chair, um, yeah. Mr. Measure, uh, perhaps you, um, Mr. Brown, you could address uh, the question that the commenter brought up about potential damage or drywall cracks, et cetera, to the buildings. Yeah, I, you know, to be frank, I just I don't even know how to address that. I think that the um, that it's um, somewhat unfounded. I, I don't I don't it's not something that happens. It's a regular activity, as the planner said. Uh, it's a, a thing that we do uh, throughout the Puget Sound um, on a daily basis in all locations, close to all sorts of buildings. Um, the uh, uh, the the uh, the likelihood of something like that, I would say, is zero. Thank you, Mr. Brown. Any um, any other information for the good of the order before we close the hearing and resume discussion with the commission? Uh, none being offered. Uh, we will close the public hearing at this time and open this up for dis planning commission discussion. Do any members of the commission have uh, comments or, or input here? I'm, I'm curious, um, how long, how long will it take? Like the, the, the noise and the vibrations, if it's a part of the project. How long do you think it will take to install all of this? How much, how much will that pain, that quote pain be? So, um, you know, there's, there's two um, parts of the process um, in regards to um, that, that, that would create any significant amount of noise and that's the pile removal and then the pile installation. Um, the pile removal, uh, typically doesn't have any substantial noise. Basically, the sound of a generator running um, is the max amount of noise that, that you're gonna hear from that, especially because they're wood pile, they don't, they don't um, transmit that, that sound. Um, the, uh, the pile installation, um, it, it ranges, and, and a lot of this is you know, site specific, but um, usually when I am anticipating um, a, um, you know, how many piling we, we can drive in a day, uh, usually I would say seven. Um, each one of those piling is actually only being actively driven typically for a half an hour, which I think is, is probably on the gracious side, it's probably more like 10 to 15 minutes, um, but maybe up to a half an hour, depending on how hard the, the soils are. Um, so what we're talking about is, uh, Tabitha, how many piling are there? There will be 43 new installed. Yeah, so we're talking about roughly a week uh, or you know, work week of, uh, of pile driving. And during that period of time on each individual day, we're talking about roughly, you know, three hours spaced out periodically of actual driving noise. Uh, is your question answered, Ms. Ruther? 
Yes, thank you. That was perfect. That was perfect. Thank you. <laughs> Great. Any other questions or comments from commissions? Commission. So do I hear a motion from a commission member? This is my first real meeting. <laughs> I, I move that uh, we, we move the proposal to city council uh, with a recommendation of due pass. To, uh, may I add a clarification? Yes, Subject please. to the conditions defined yes. by the city staff? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I will second Mr. Molino's um, motion. And we take roll and, and have a vote. Uh, Mr. Jaretsky? I vote to approve. Mr. Corral? Approve. Ms. Ruther? Approve. Mr. Mono? Approve. Uh, Ms. Martin? She's Ms. not Martin present. Not present. Uh, Mr. Gray? Approve. And I approve also. Motion carries. Uh, Mr. Chair? Yes, Mr. Just like to Just like to thank everybody for showing up this Wednesday night. Uh, we don't have anything on our agenda for next Wednesday uh, for the next regularly scheduled meeting. But we will certainly let you know as soon as we're ready to bring the Shoreline's Master Program in. Appreciate that. Mr. Chair, I have a couple of questions that I'd like to uh, chat about before we leave, if that's okay. Excellent. Well, one of the things, uh, uh, the, the questions are relatively unrelated, but at the last meeting, um, we talked about when we were going to have an opportunity to discuss, debate, have a dialogue about some of the issues associated with the MSP, SMP, because we had had four successive presentations, but we really didn't have time for, or the opportunity, if you will, to kick the tires on some of the some of the issues that were raised. Uh, so that's one question. I assume, and Mr. Meeser, you brought the fact up that we're going to have a, another meeting um, on the SP. That's the next thing forthcoming. So I assume we'll be will we be able to do it then? Because I know there's been an update made to the SMP and are we going to have a chance then to go into depth about some of the questions we have? So that's the one question. I That's the first one. The second one was, when will we get involved with um, the roundabout discussion? And Commercial Avenue, Commercial Avenue and uh, 12th Street, the Spur. Uh, there was an open house video, if you will. You can see some of the, some of the, some of the discussions of different alternatives. But as a planning commission, wouldn't it behoove us to start talking about that before decisions are made, et cetera, and looking, talking about the different alternatives, different options, drivers for this potential requirement? 
is that in the is that on the agenda, if you will, in the near future? Um, Mr. Chair, if I may. Please do, Mr. Mead. So um, Shoreline's master program, what, what's happening right now on that is that we are providing responses to all the comments that we've received. Those will be distributed to um, Department of Ecology along with potential um, revisions to the draft. And once ecology has taken a look at that and said, yeah, okay, um, we agree or no, we need you to change this, then we'll be scheduling a meeting with the planning commission to go over all the comments, address your concerns and have further discussion um, about all the comments that came in. Um, and we may end up having two or more meetings on the SMP, just depends on how the evening goes out through the comments. We received right around 68 written comments on the SMP. And so that's, it's going to take probably a couple of meetings just to go through everything and, and make sure, as you say, we kicked the tires and got it right before we move it on to city council. Um, in regards to the capital project for 12th and commercial and potential roundabout, um, the planning commission doesn't get involved with those. That's um, not a permit type. That's purely a contractual issue decided by the city council and public works director. And so at this point, it's you know out at the public to get comments uh, in regards to, okay, well, which direction does the community think we should go? And then the city council makes the ultimate decision on what design they feel is best based on the comments received. Well, I guess my, my only re response to that, and thank you, Mr. Mesmer, is that's, that's really disappointing because when you think of a planning commission, you would like to think that we would be involved in major changes, and I would consider this one, obviously, because it affects on to the future of the city. And as we, our work, it appears to be focused on, you know, like you said, permitted projects that pretty much when they come to us are, because your staff does an excellent job, quite frankly, they're pretty well much saucered and blown. And there, we really have very little contribution. So I was thinking on something like the roundabout project, where you're looking at a whole lot of vested interests in the community, be it, you know, various businesses, et cetera, the, in the community, that that would be an ideal place for us to bring our expertise that each of us individually share and to the party there. And it's a meaning, it's a, it's a substantive decision to be made. Just my few cents worth, as it were. Thank you and, for the time. Um, and if I may, Mr. Chair, so a lot of um, work the Planning Commission does or will be doing more of is um, a, a lot of policy discussion and discovery. I, I like to call it discovery. You know, we would, staff would prepare a draft and have public meetings with the planning commission and planning commission ultimately make a decision to the city council. A good example of that, um, the comprehensive plan, the transportation comprehensive plan. And there are a couple others that you know would be coming before the planning commission. Development regulation changes, all policy decisions that the planning commission would be involved with. Uh, so, Planning Commission has a huge role in how the community is, is will be shaped. Um, I understand what you're saying with the with the potential roundabout, which they have not decided yet which way they're going on that. The city council is still still listening to the comments and deciding. So that that's a ways out yet. But understood. Um, 
Could we have maybe the when a decision is made, could we have the city engineer come explain it to us? Because I worked as a planner for you know about ten or twelve years and have a planning degree, and I do think transportation is this big driver, right, for land use. So um, if whether or not we're you know kind of in the pipeline for the decision making, it will affect all of our decisions, you know, down the line. So. Um, I, I, as a citizen, made a comment, you know, at the open house. So I would, you know, invite you guys to make comments as well. But um, it might be nice, even if it's, you know, later, later on down, down the process, to, to have, just so we can all like absorb it in a big picture way. Um, absolutely, I can talk with our city engineer and public works director, and uh, we can arrange a presentation if you like. We'll do that as soon as possible. I think that would be very useful. I don't recall exactly, but I went back and read through the, basically the authorities granted to the planning commission. And in terms of the actual authority the commission has, it's fairly, fairly specified, but I think there must be a lot of room to maneuver here about using the planning commission as a resource. Um, absolutely. And I think that, you know, having a presentation here at, at the planning commission level from the city engineer and the uh, design consultants would provide that opportunity for more valuable public input. Mr. Chair, yeah. um, if I could just kind of throw my two cents in on this as well. I mean, it is, it is somewhat disappointing though to that by policy, the planning commission wouldn't be involved in something that you would think would have a, a strategic impact on comprehensive planning. You know, I recall a year and a half ago, we were sitting around wondering, how are we going to bring more people into the commercial downtown area? You know, what impacts are things going to have on the commercial north and south of this particular intersection? And then, you know, now a a uh, reconfiguration of that intersection is going to have a huge impact on things that we were kind of a part of in some of that planning and and we don't have an opportunity to either uh, uh, you know assist in the process allow more opportunity for the public to become a part of the process it's it's really unfortunate that there wasn't an opportunity to find a way to get the planning commission more involved in that and I'll I'll just leave it at that would it be possible to have uh, one of the staff people go back and research the the authorizing documents or the the municipal code that that sets the planning commission up and see how much room we have to move there on an official basis in addition to whatever informal assistance the commission may be involved with. We can do that. And I want to um, reinforce what Mr. Miesmer said about the next steps in the shoreline development prod, um, plan. If, if this is anything like happened during the code development, we had fairly extensive discussions based on the staff's work in responding to the public input and making recommendations for us to discuss. We had a um, pretty, it pretty well was laid out and I think we went through point by point to look at each of those. Am I remembering that correct? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. And my thought is, is that we'll probably end up going um, section by section, keeping in mind, there aren't a lot of changes or, or amendments to the SMP, but there are some very significant proposals that um, we will need to dive into with the Planning Commission. And many of those were um, commented on. So you will have an opportunity to see each and every one of the comments, responses to the comments, and any amendments to the drafts 
and we'll have a long discussion on it. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Minister, I'd like to go back to the, the question of uh, 12th and commercial. Uh, not just that intersection, but does the city, and I have not seen it, have a systematic plan or a strategy for identifying those intersections which need to be addressed as part of the transportation plan. I know uh, south here, or not that far south, but uh, you know, all of a sudden the neighborhoods are talking about uh, uh, M and 32nd and what's going to happen there. Uh, is that going to be a roundabout? All kinds of options being discussed offline with absolutely no organizing principle whatsoever. Uh, but it's interesting to, to follow some of that. But is there a systematic policy plan that the city has is where they think that is the option and the appropriate option? And then how is that design process driven either to make that work or choose another alternative? Sure. sure. Um, so you'll want to take a look at the 2016 comprehensive plan and in the back of it in one of the appendices is the uh, transportation plan. Yes. And that will give you a lot of information on you know, some of the future projects. You'll also be able to find online our capital facilities plan, which also talks about various road projects and how they align those. I, I've read, I've seen both those, read both of those. I don't have them memorized yet, but I'm fairly good at doing yeah. that. A uh, little frightening at times of uh, what I do remember and what I forget. Uh, but the issue is, is there a strategic overview of that uh, and how those link and then how you step through the decision process? That's that's my basic question. Well, uh, yes, and I'm going to say yes. What we'll do is I'll get our uh, city engineer in to give a presentation on the whole merit of okay. things. That would be really appreciated. Absolutely. Um, I'll also share with you when we have projects come in, many of them require uh, transportation, um, level one transportation report, I think it is. And what that will do is that will determine the number of trips that are generated mm -hmm. by the project, the level of service at each intersection and level of service in the, um, you know, the general vicinity. And that will also determine what kind of improvements might be required at a specific intersection. So. That's required um, by our department for the projects. For instance, if a, if a 20 lot subdivision goes in, they're gonna do a traffic report. And it's gonna analyze intersections, uh, turning movements, et cetera, within five blocks probably of each side. And then that tells us what needs to happen. Sure. I think our city engineer would, I think, I think you all would um, really, um, find some value in a presentation from our city engineer on, on all this. So we'll put yeah. that together as soon as possible. Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, any other comments or questions from the commissioners? Well, thank you everybody for your participation and your time. Um, we will close the meeting of the planning commission and reconvene at the next scheduled time, assuming we have work to do at that scheduled date. Good night.